Hey everyone, it's Project SBC and I'm back today to talk about the new Latte Panda product that just released on Kickstarter, the Latte Panda 3 Delta. Now don't let the name confuse you, it doesn't mean it's the third Latte Panda Delta. It's the third generation Latte Panda product and it's the second generation Latte Panda Delta. So we're going to talk about the specs what's changed, what I like, and what kind of projects I'm going to do with this board when I get it. So first thing we see, we have a new cooler on the Latte Panda Delta. Now, I don't think that the last generation cooler was going to be insufficient to cool this new processor on the Latte Panda Delta. What I think they're doing is, I think they're gearing up for the next generation Latte Panda Alpha, which will have a beefier CPU. So this new platform, this new CPU cooler is going to be the stepping stone to the next generation Latte Panda Alpha. Let's scroll down. So they've already reached their goal. It was $40,000. They're at $51,000. It's not even 12 hours yet. So we knew that this was going to happen. We knew it was going to get funded, but it's done. 12 hours in, less than 12 hours in, we're definitely going to get this product. So we got a new processor. It is the Intel Celeron N5105 with turbo up to 2.9 gigahertz. They make a couple claims, twice as fast CPU wise as the last generation and three times the GPU performance. I'll take a look when I get the board. I've got all my other boards ready to go to do some benchmarks so we can make some comparisons between the last generation Delta and actually the Alpha as well. This is a 10 watt TDP CPU which is pretty close to the TDP we saw on the M38100Y, which I think I went up to about 12 watts. So we're in the same TDP profile. We might be getting similar performances to the last generation Latte Panda Alpha. So I would like to test that a little bit further as well. So here's some benchmarks. Size, let's talk about size. So here's the last generation Latte Panda Delta. Here is the new generation. You're gonna notice it's a little bit longer. 10 millimeters in fact. Your old cases aren't going to work with a new Latte Panda Delta. I think they're going to work on a new case for the next generation product, but if you have some sort of rig for your old product and you want to get the new one, you're going to have to modify it a little bit. 16 millimeters thick. That's awesome. Really thin. I'm definitely going to do a compact eGPU build. I have a GTX 1650 and an RTX 3060 I would like to test as well with this computer. So here we are, we've got faster RAM, we've got LPDDR4 RAM, we've got 8 gigabytes, twice as much as the last generation, and we'll see a picture of it later down. It does look like there's two modules, so we do have dual channel, that's nice, and it's 2933 megahertz, which is pretty fast as well. And we also get up to 64 gigabytes of eMMC. The 32 on my Delta is a little bit small, I kind of wish there was more space. I couldn't install the games that I wanted on the eMMC without installing an SSD. That extra few gigabytes is really gonna make um, make it easier not to have an SSD on this. So, Linux, Linux and Windows support, obviously. Um, we've got Wi-Fi 6. We've got two M.2 connectors. So here in this picture, they're advertising a cellular module that you can put on the one side. I actually want to talk about the M.2 connectors in general. So here we have two M.2 connectors. We have an M key and we have a B key. And the last generation, it used to be M B key on the left and an A E key on the right. So M and B were going to be the SATA NVMe SSDs. And on the other side was going to be like a Wi-Fi module kind of pointless. You already had a Wi-Fi built in. This B key allows you to put a SATA SSD on the right hand side and the M key allows you to put an NVMe SSD on. So you can actually have two SSDs installed at the same time on this board. And that was something that I kind of wish was on the last generation products. Thank you Latte Panda for listening and making this a feature on the new product. You can now have two SSDs on the board at the same time without any janky adapters. Just plug them in. That's also going to be great for eGPU builds because now you're going to be able to put a SATA SSD, which is pretty fast. You can get a lot of storage and you can free up that M key for your eGPU adapter. You don't have to worry about other adapters like the Syntec adapter I had in my one video. 
Um, it's going to make everything really simple and clean to make that kind of setup. Thank you, Latte Panda. I really appreciate this feature. I can't wait to test it out. Let's moving along. We've got this Watchdog Auto Power On feature in the BIOS. So basically what they are, Watchdog, if the CPU crashes, it will auto reboot back into Windows. For the Auto Power On, we've got when power is applied to the board, the board will automatically boot up. That's something that people ask about the last generation product. They actually made a BIOS update to enable that. Not everyone knew about it. And I still get requests to this day to have the auto power on feature in the BIOS. So thank you Latte Panda for making that built into this BIOS. That's going to be another awesome feature to have. Power control, the connectors. It took me a moment to kind of figure out what they're trying to get at here. What I think they're trying to say is, is that when there's power to the board, you don't have to have the CPU on, you boot it into Windows or Linux to get five volts on the USB power connectors. If you're running the Arduino and you need to plug in some accessories, you should be able to now turn on those USB ports to get five volts so you can power some peripherals and it's gonna make the project a lot more easier to manage instead of trying to run off those five volt connectors on the um, Arduino pin header. So that's something that nice as well. So we have a new cooling fan, we already saw that. There's a nice little graphic they made. Audio amplifier, this is another feature I love. Thank you Latte Panda for adding this. This has a built-in um, audio amplifier. So in order to get external speakers on your Latte Panda, all you have to do is plug in the speakers. If you saw some of my previous videos, you'll know that I did a project, a handheld. I wanted to add the speaker. I had to come up with a USB sound card that I used pin headers to plug into the board to solder on some speakers to the sound card and then I had to rig all that up in the case. It was not easy. I spent hours trying to get that organized out. And now next generation product, you just need the speakers. That's going to be awesome. That's going to be awesome for the people who want to make a tablet or some um, sound effects for some project. It's going to make it super easy to incorporate. Thank you again, Latte Panda. Talking about the displays, same setup as last time. You've got USB-C, you've got the EDP connector, and you've got an HDMI 2.0 port. They do say that there is dual 4K support, which is nice. Um, pin headers, we've got basically the same input outputs, the USB type A's, HDMI, Ethernet, headphone, USB-C. We've still got the JST connector for power. On the bottom, we got the two M.2 slots we already talked about, and we have the EDP and touch panel connectors here, so you can use your last generation touch screen on this. Integrated Arduino, some accessories, and I think this Latte Panda uh, Titan case here is gonna have to get updated. I don't think that's to the new dimensions. And a UPS hat. now. It took me some time to think about this. When I first saw it, I really thought it was going to be a UPS for the computer. I'm not quite sure anymore. I asked Latte Panda to clarify, so hopefully they'll provide some more information in the next couple of days. Is this a 4S battery pack, like a LiPo pack or a lithium ion battery pack, where you could power the board? Or is that 1.5 volt cells and this is something for the Arduino? The way that this hat is set up, you're blocking the air intake on the fan. I don't think that's meant to be on there when the CPU is running. Otherwise, you're kind of cutting off the air supply to the uh, the CPU and the cooler. I'm almost going to guess that that's for the Arduino. If you want to make it so that you can run your Arduino without plugging in some external power supply, I think that's what this is for. The only thing I don't get is you don't have access to the pin headers or maybe there's some way to get to the pin headers below. I'm not sure what this is, and I hope Latte Panda will clarify that in the near future. 7 inch touchscreen display, that was from the last generation. Here's a DF Robot uh, display. You can actually get this on the DF Robot site now, but this is also one of the accessories in one of the packages. Some nice pictures, specifications. So, actually, if we take a look here, you can see calls out two RAM chips, which probably means that this is dual channel, which is awesome. 
and we've got basically pretty much the same layout as previous generations. So here's a quick comparison and we're going to see down below that there is a 10 millimeter difference in length on this board. If you can get one of the early bird prices of $199, that's a steal. If I could, I'd buy 10 of them. I don't think my wife would approve. But either way, I'm really loving this product. It's not going to be compatible with everything that you had on the previous generation. So cases and stuff, you're going to have to make some modifications or buy a new case. That kind of sucks. But we do have a lot of new features. We have the built-in audio amplifier. We've got the dual SSD support now built-in. We've got the beefier cooler. This new processor, it's probably not going to run hot with that new cooler. Um, and for $199, if you're a small form factor PC lover like I am, I love this form factor. Uh, don't hesitate to buy it. I'm, I'm definitely going to be getting one. So... Dive in, enjoy the Latte Panda products if you do. Um, if you're waiting off for the Alpha, I don't blame you. Let's hold off and see what kind of uh, processor that has. I'm really looking forward to something beefier like Ice Lake or above. But this is an awesome board, and for $199, that's, that's almost a steal. So if you love this form factor and you definitely want a new computer, yeah, go for it. This is going to be an awesome project uh, board. It's going to be an awesome media center board it's gonna be maybe my eGPU a little small form factor gaming PC for a little while who knows I love this board thank you Latte Panda um, if you have any questions about this you can leave that in the comments below if you enjoyed the video please hit the like button maybe even subscribe and thanks for watching I'll leave a link to the Kickstarter in the description below as well